you should probably expect spoilers. So, there's this character called Papyrus, right? And he's uh, from a game called Undertale. Maybe you've heard of it, I don't know. If you have, then great, as that saves me trouble of recapping the entire storyline. <laughs> uh, but what's Papyrus's own personal backstory then? Well, Papyrus is chasing his dream of joining the Royal Guard, which is the main military force for the Society of Monsters. He believes that this will make him more popular within their underground community. To help him reach his goal, he ends up trying to capture a human, in the hopes that in doing so, he will be awarded a place on the Royal Guard. However, with you being the first human he meets, causes a few problems for him. For one, every puzzle he sets up to capture you is easily beaten, mainly because they weren't very good traps to begin with. Secondly, because Papyrus is actually an incredibly soft-hearted individual, he ends up befriending you instead. With these two things going against the grain of Papyrus' schemes, it doesn't take long for his whole plan to fall into the shitter, thereby putting his dream of joining the Royal Guard on hold. Throughout the rest of the game, Papyrus gets involved in a few side arcs concerning Undyne, the leader of the Royal Guard. He also becomes your main phone contact should you need information about any area you're travelling through, though most of the information he provides is generally useless anyway. With his role in the game fairly straightforward, there's no moments of any major plot twisting to be had with him, and his arc is fairly tidy throughout. As far as Undertale fans go, it does seem that Papyrus has earned quite the following. But why is that? Well, I'm gonna find out. Or I mean, you know, take a few random guesses and hope maybe one of them makes sense. Yeah, fuck it, let's wing it. Visual design. Papyrus and his brother Sans have the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito from the movie Twins vibe going on. Sans is short and round, while Papyrus is a tall and lanky looking dude. Aside from the fact that they're both skeletons though, they don't actually share any major resemblance at all. The most defining thing about Papyrus is the suit of armour he wears, or as he likes to call it, his battle body. Sans mentions that they made the outfit themselves for a costume party and Papyrus has not taken it off since. The outfit is mostly white with gold accents and is accompanied by red boots, gloves and a matching scarf. Due to Papyrus' bones also being white, the character's overall appearance does feel a little flooded with the colour, but I think the reason for this design choice is to draw attention to the darker areas on him. The red stands out incredibly well due to how much white there is, and we are instantly drawn to these accessories more because of it. Also, I know that in a number of appearances, the colour of Papyrus' bones for his arms and legs are coloured black instead of white. Ketrin, our guest artist for this episode, was kind enough to provide an alternative image in case this issue came up. So, there you go. If you think he has white bones, then good for you. If you think he has black bones, then good for you. Quite frankly, I don't care which of them is correct because Michael Jackson taught me a very long time ago that It don't matter if you're black or white Personality Papyrus is one of the hardest working characters in Undertale. He is constantly eager to impress. His drive knows no bounds, and he never second guesses himself, regardless of if he's failing or not. Even when he is getting things wrong, he keeps on going, partly due to maybe being oblivious to his mistakes, or maybe because he would rather stay focused on trying to achieve things and doesn't spend time feeling sorry for himself. He will always continue to work hard in his efforts to be accepted by the Royal Guard, and that actually makes him a pretty inspiring character to have around. He may be loud and obnoxious, lord knows his text speech sound effect is grating to my ears, but the principles behind the character are sincere and honest. The reason why Papyrus is like this is because he strives for friendship and acceptance. Maybe Papyrus is just seeking to broaden the amount of friends he has, not for popularity's sake, but because he wishes to turn his small group of friends into a slightly bigger family. This is made apparent by the fact that as soon as he has befriended you, he instantly wants to share you with Undyne, his other good friend. So maybe it's not a pursuit for popularity, but perhaps Papyrus is trying to create a closer circle around him. Don't get me wrong, he's definitely very ambitious with his career choices, but I feel that friendship may play a bigger role in his life, at least more than he leads on. 
One last thing to Papyrus' personality is something that tends to get overlooked, and yet it's probably one of the more intriguing aspects about the character. He has a huge dislike for puns and bad jokes, despite telling a lot of jokes himself. And this is not down to the nature of the game itself being comedic in its presentation. Characters like Asgore and Asriel are very serious in tone, and even though Alphys and Undyne can be considered funny, they're not purposely trying to make us laugh, they're just broadcasting their extreme personalities which we find humorous. But with Papyrus, things are different. He literally says things that are delivered in a way that aims for some form of punchline. Papyrus has mentioned that he hates bad jokes, and often gets annoyed at his brother Sans for telling too many of them. And yet, a huge majority of the stuff that comes out of Papyrus' mouth is a joke in itself. I don't think they're intentional either. For someone who hates jokes, he doesn't seem to have any trouble telling humorous things to other people, which leads me to believe he's unaware that he's doing it. It's likely a side effect from being around Sans for so long and having to put up with his tastes in humour. The art of comedy has likely rubbed off on Papyrus, and he doesn't even know it. Importance. A lot of the main cast members filter in and out of the story. Toriel holds down the opening section of the game, Sans is a central character who only pops up at specific points, Undyne and Alphys take up most of the middle and end half, so where does that leave Papyrus? Well, this is where Papyrus gets interesting again because it seems to me that he was designed to be a character who remains the closest to you throughout the whole adventure. Unless you kill him of course, then he's written out. But think about how much you see of Papyrus in this game. He takes up a huge portion of the first half when he's the main antagonist trying to stop you. After he realises he'd rather be your friend instead, his role in the story might change, but it doesn't mean he goes anywhere. Papyrus is involved throughout the Undyne arc of the story because she's his mentor. Even after you have spared Undyne, Papyrus pops up again to try and make the pair of you friends. Furthermore, if you go through the Alphys arc and set up the dates between her and Undyne, Papyrus makes an appearance during that part too. Even Flowey, the game's main antagonist, had Papyrus wrapped up in his plans by manipulating him towards the end of the game. Then there's the actual character relationships themselves. Needless to say, but Papyrus shares a bond with Sans, and despite how he is often annoyed by Sans' laziness, he still cares for his brother an awful lot. He also shares a strong bond with Undyne. Due to Undyne being his teacher, they hang out very regularly. Papyrus sees Undyne through eyes of admiration, not based on a loving emotion, but more along the lines of a role model and someone he aspires to be as awesome as. Finally, there's Papyrus' connection to you, the player. Providing that you follow the route of sparing him, he will befriend you and take a very strong liking to you. This connection to you brings us to one of the more apparent methods in which the game tries to keep Papyrus active as a character, and that is when Papyrus gives you his phone number and tells you to call him from time to time. This is entirely optional of course, but if you do call Papyrus, he will say something unique each time depending on which room or dungeon you're currently standing in. This elevates Papyrus' involvement with the player. It makes him one of the most reachable characters to contact by phone, as other characters like Toriel will no longer answer their phone after a certain point. Papyrus becomes the most reliable contact to have, as you know more than likely he will always answer your call. The fact that Papyrus also says something different depending on where you are in the game encourages the player to call him every time you reach a new location just to see what he will say. It's an incentive to keep the bond between the player and Papyrus going even when the character is no longer on screen. With all these things considered, including optional features and side quests, Papyrus actually turns out to be the character who has the most appearances throughout the game. Whether or not he contributes anything important to the story is another thing, but either way, he's a character who remains at the forefront. Conclusion. Papyrus is a character you either love or hate. Most fans of Undertale love him and he tends to be crowned as one of the highlights of the game. For those who are not fans of Undertale though, it seems to be that he was one of the characters people had a problem with, and I can see where both sides come from. The soft-hearted Papyrus with big dreams is a very larger-than-life character. He can be loud and in-your-face with his obnoxious side, and yet he can be endearing and thoughtful in his own way. I find Papyrus to be a pretty entertaining character most of the time, and I do appreciate his inclusion in the game. On the other hand, this character has to grab you from the get-go, because if he doesn't, then chances are he never will, because he never really changes. His brand of humour can be very lengthy in delivery, which is not everyone's cup of tea. I can understand that. 
But if you find yourself liking Papyrus right out of the gates, then he's going to keep you interested in everything he does right through to the game's conclusion.